When we were thinking through this uh, conference, we were thinking that what we would do is have, of course, two sessions of these roundtable uh, engagements, but we wanted to put something in between them to sort of um, cleanse your palate. Uh, so, yes, I know, you would have preferred sherbet, but uh, what we thought we would do is give you an opportunity to actually see this software in action. But that's not going to be my part. Um, what we'll have are stations around the room, four of them, with four of our applications available, as well as the people who help develop them and use them and train people how to use them for you to understand what does this software really look like and what does it really do. But it, to introduce that, we thought it might make sense to walk through a scenario in much more human terms. I'm a computer programmer going back to the age when operating systems were in eight bits. So the three ICT people in the room just got that joke. Um, and what I've found is quite often people don't understand software because they don't necessarily, the ICT people don't necessarily approach it in human terms. So what I'd like to do is play a scenario for you looking at a health worker in a fictional country that we have created. We actually created a data set for this entire country, uh, and we've populated it with uh, many, many records, but I'm just gonna talk about one person. Uh, and the idea is to give you a public sector example of how IRIS essentially facilitates a person's path through their career, as well as facilitating the uh, country's guidance of that person's path, because there is both challenge and response that are involved. This is Medii Sabato. She lives in a country um, that we've created. Uh, it's Taifa Feke. It's somewhere in Africa. Um, and the country uh, that she grew up in, and at this point has just graduated from high school, has a set of issues relating to uh, maternal and child health. But what we're gonna do is track Sabato's pathway through 30 years of her career. We're looking into the future, and we're gonna look at her pre-service education, uh, how she's recruited, where she's deployed, how she is trained in an in-service way, redeployed, promoted, and the like, um, all the way to her eventual retirement after a happy and productive career. So, Taifa Feke has challenges such as a health worker shortage, high child and uh, maternal mortality, uh, particularly because of HIV AIDS and its transmission. The Ministry of Health, of course, is trying to grapple with these kinds of issues. And what they're trying to do is use the inadequate number of health workers they have to greatest effect. And the challenge, of course, is how to find qualified candidates for the positions that they want to create uh, and need to create for particularly maternal and child health, particularly in HIV AIDS. So, after high school, about that time, um, the ministry decides that uh, the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Education get together and they decide we need more nurses, we need more midwives trained to be able to address these issues. And they use this new source, a uh, new application called Iris Train. And it's installed at the Ministry of Health and it facilitates looking at the issues uh, pre-service and in-service training, particularly for nurse midwives and other clinicians, and it's used by uh, uh, a variety of places, by deans of students to understand where are the needs, how do we shape our courses and our curricula and our programs in order to meet these needs. Well, Sabato applies to uh, the National University. She wants to become a nurse, that's her dream. Um, she's also practical enough to realize that's part of the pathway to become a nurse midwife. 
And like a lot of people, she's worried, am I going to be able to have a job? Am I going to be able to support myself and my family to contribute to all of that? Becoming a nurse, nurse midwife eventually sounds like a really good idea. But first, she's got to go to university, and she has to be trained in that. So what happens, of course, is Iris Train is also used by the university. And she is put into that system in terms of her records and her data relating to the workforce needs for the entire country. And as she passes her exams and she graduates, she is ready to move into the workforce. But there's a step along the way. She needs to be certified. She needs to be licensed. And in her country, that is, there is a nursing and midwifery council where she is able to go and register. They look up her information. They see that she has graduated. They see that um, she is able to be registered into the system and that she's eligible to say she is a nurse and can go work in the public sector. But that's on the individual level. She also needs to be recruited and deployed somewhere in the country. Where is the best place to place her? And at the Ministry of Health, the HR manager uses recommended vacancy reports from Iris Manage, another piece of software that they use, to show the exact number of midwives that need to be hired at three levels, at the national level, the district level, and down to the facility level. His department advertises open positions for people to uh, take up these kinds of uh, positions. Through a process of elimination, you're all familiar with it, they shortlist five candidates. Uh, and so what happens then is they vet each of them, looking at their credentials. Where did they go to school? How did they, did they pass their exams? Uh, are they registered? Um, are they current in their CE courses? Do, have they participated in any continuing professional development? And one of the other things is um, the hiring manager also checks with the dean of students at her university using Iris Train to confirm that Sabato's pre-service training and competencies are appropriate for the position they want to put her into. Once he is satisfied with that, he sends an offer, a letter of offer to Sabato for a new position. And so what this does is essentially uh, shows you the intersection between the individual and the institutional. That is, how these pieces of software affect individuals' decisions based on their management responsibilities, but also the individual decision of the person involved who is going to be the health worker. So Sabato is now in, in a new facility. She's doing the work that she has always wanted to do. She is remarkably happy, but circumstances always change. Family status changes. Someone goes and gets more training. They want to improve themselves. They want to be promoted. So how do we keep, and to keep these folks in productive places, retain them within the system somewhere where they can make the greatest contribution to the country in the role that they want to play? So what the ministry has done is they've created a package of incentives and career opportunities for continuing professional development. They've uh, talked about uh, modeling things like adequate uh, remuneration. I always stumble over that one. Um, housing and transport subsidies so that uh, Sabato and her family feel that they're well supported, despite the fact she's serving currently in a somewhat remote post. And as her career progresses over the years, she takes more training. Uh, she is promoted to more senior positions. Uh, IRIS applications across the board are used to sort of monitor her progress, but also that of other people within her situation. And after several decades of service, Sabato believes it's time to think about retirement. But she's not the only person who has thought about that. The ministry is thinking about it. The ministry is understanding the demography of the health workforce. They're looking and able to project into the future. We see that in this 
cadre, we are likely to have this number of retirements, so we need to prepare for that, and we look backwards to the source of people trained in that. Do we have enough people in this pipeline all the way back to pre-service education through the system in order to fill these positions as they are vacated by people who have had a happy and productive career? So as Sabato moves into retirement, enjoys her grandchildren, speaking as a grandfather, it's the greatest ride in the amusement park, what we've seen is Sabato and her country, through its ministries and through its healthcare organization, have used this suite of interrelated and interoperable software to be able to guide the national steps in the aggregate, but also to contribute to the productivity and happiness of an individual person who works within that system, who spends an entire career helping other people in the health workforce system and essentially helps their country take a step toward universal health coverage. So how is this done? We are going to have four stations. Um, let's see, where's Iris Train over here. Uh, and again, we believe in physical activity, so you got to get up and move for the most part. Over here in this table, we are going to have a demonstration of Iris Train. Luke Duncan and Michael Drain are going to guide your steps, answer any question they want. In part, they'll show a little bit about Sabato and her experience and what's it really look like in some software. But more importantly, they're there for you to ask questions about the software, questions of its use. The same in Qualify, uh, which is over there. Um, Coyote Orosote and Carl Leitner are going to talk through what Qualify does and how it contributes to this process. Manage is up here. Um, that's Twaha Kabocho and Juma Lungo. Uh, they're going to talk about that particular software. And Retain is going to be back over there. Rachel Dusum is going to talk about how that particular thing works. What we wanted to do was to give you this particular human story, because that's really what it's about, the impact of what IRIS does. But now you have a chance to ask any question in terms of development, use, and impact. And the people who can answer pretty much any question you can come up with are in the room. So get up, move around. We have 23 minutes. Yeah. OK, and then we'll resume. <laughs>